Good morning, New Calvary Baptist Church, and to all of our Facebook friends. We are so excited that you have decided to worship with us today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Let us pray together our prayer of invocation. All wise and eternal creator, Abba, Father, Daddy, Mother God, we come before you this morning, oh God, just to say thank you and to say that you're welcome in this space. You're welcome in this virtual worship experience. Have have your way, Holy Spirit, that when we leave this place, we will not leave like we came, but we'll leave excited to run on to see what the end is going to be. It is in the marvelous, the magnificent, the miracle-working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our mind regulator, and our helper that we pray. All of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth on this morning. How grateful we are to share in this moment as we declare the goodness of the Lord, how we understand 
um, that we share in this moment with you. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. We are blessed to be in worship. We are blessed to be in this time, and we declare God's goodness continues to speak to us and share with us in this moment. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice, to be glad, and to share in it. And we are delighted, family, that you are sharing with us on this Sunday morning. We hope and pray that something is said or done in this worship experience that simply reminds you of the love and the power that is in the name of Jesus. We continue to share in this worship experience, so please put your likes up, put your thumbs up, put your hearts in uh, as we thank God for this praise and worship team that continues to bless us and continues to offer uh, us song and ministry in their gift. Hey, New Calvary family and friends, how you doing? We are just so delighted to share with you in this moment. Listen, we want to just share a quick few things with you. We are looking forward to sharing uh, in the month of September and continuing moving forward virtually as we worship together. We want you to know we are putting together just because we are worshiping virtually does not mean um, that we will still not try our best to bring you some of the most powerful and relevant teaching we can in terms of our leadership. And so we are still planning uh, our leadership conference, and we're looking to do that virtually. We're looking for folks uh, to sign up, and we will give you that information so you can sign up and be a part of our virtual um, training as we continue to just grow as a church, as we look to talk about what direction we are going to move in in this season as we look to continue to grow and do ministry and what it means for us uh, in this particular time. We also uh, want you to know that we so are so ever so grateful for your continued giving and being a blessing to the New Calvary family as we just continue to minister and to serve and as we continue to deal uh, and with our operating expenses, we are grateful for your gifts, and people have brought their gifts in, people have mailed their gifts, and people are using Givelify and making New Calvary their favorite place to give. So continue uh, to uh, share in your tithes and offerings in this season as we just continue to stretch uh, and share with one another. Uh, we hope and pray that in this month of August, you have been blessed um, by um, these words, by this worship, by this virtual team that continues to bless us. We want you to make sure that you're sharing your likes and your hearts for this virtual team that continues to work diligently to put all of this together. We want you to make sure um, that you like and follow our Facebook page. Uh, those of you who are sharing, make sure that you do that. We want you to make sure that you are signing on, following us, uh, and we also want Want you to subscribe to our YouTube page. Our YouTube page is growing uh, and we're expanding. We're excited about that and what God is doing as we continue to stream. God keeps giving us avenues that we would continue to extend this ministry to even greater places as we go forward. And so we want to ask that you just continue to be faithful in that. We're going to continue to move forward in this worship experience. And so if there are prayers and concerns that you have in this particular moment. Please put them in your comment section. Please make sure that you list your prayers so our virtual minister will continue to respond and let you know that as a church family, we are continuing to pray for you. For we believe that God is continuing to move in this moment, that as we continue to share and as we just continue to grow in faith, we believe God is continuing to answer in this moment. So as we prepare our hearts and minds, let us look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Gracious God, how we thank you and how we love you. We bless your holy name for all that you have done, and we bless your name for this day, this day which you have allowed us to come together, this day that you have allowed us to receive your word and your worship. God, we are grateful for each day that you have allowed us uh, to walk and simply operate in this space. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done, for when we look back over our lives, we understand the days have been blessed. We understand that you have been covering and following us uh, on this life's journey. 
So God, continue to bless us as we go forward. Bless us, God, as we prepare our hearts and minds as our children make their way back to school very soon. Bless them, God, uh, as we are continuing, even if we are learning virtually, God, we put our trust in you. We're praying for every household right now that needs you. We're praying for every mother, praying for every father, praying for every teacher, praying for every school administrator, all those, God, who need you right now as we prepare our hearts and minds to continue to educate and to lift up our young people. But not only are we asking you to touch our young people, God, we're asking you to touch our families in terms of our finances. We're asking you to speak to the hearts and minds of those who are still operating and trying to move in places of faithfulness during this pandemic. Touch them now, God, as they continue to understand what it is you would have them to do. We understand, God, that even in the pandemic, there's still life experiences that are happening to us all. So, God, in those places of anxiety, in those places of depression and sadness, in those places where we are unsure, in those places where fear may have a hold of us, God, we're still asking that your spirit touch us. That you would break chains, God, and lift us up, God, and open up possibility that we might see your glory, your majesty, and your power. Continue, Lord, to lead us and direct us as you would have us to go. We pray still, God, for this country. We pray for this nation. We pray, God, for a healing salve to go across this nation that people might be healed and recovered from this deadly disease. We ask, dear God, that folks would use their common sense and their instruction to protect themselves and those that they care about. We ask, Lord God, that you would just continue in all things to lead us and direct us in the path that you would have us to go. And we promise, God, in all things, we'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray, God, for everybody who is watching virtually right now, every household, every person, God, every church that is continuing to do your work in your name. God, we lift you up because we believe that you are the one that will see us through. We lift you up, God, because we believe that when we look back over our lives, you are a God that has never left us or forsaken us. We look back in this moment and we celebrate you, God, and we know that you're still God all by yourself. So have your way, Lord, and continue to lead us and direct us. And we promise we'll be mindful to give your name the praise. Teach us where to go. Teach us where to step. Teach us, God, how to continue to live in accordance to your will and your way. And we will say thank you through it all. For it is in the wonderful, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen. Say amen and amen. So come on, put your lights up, put your uh, hearts up as we celebrate as our praise and worship team comes to us and shares and blesses us uh, with a song in, in this moment.
God, how we bless your name in this moment. We thank you for being a rock of sh a rock uh, in a weary land. Thank you, God, for being uh, the power that sustains and keeps us. Thank you, God, for being uh, the reminder that when we are weak, you are strong. So have your way in this moment. Speak to our heart. And in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. For someone needs to hear a word from you. Someone needs to be transformed. Someone needs to be empowered. Someone needs to be reminded that you are still God all by yourself. So speak to our hearts, God, that we might be transformed, that we might be renewed. And in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Use this your instrument, God, that I might decrease with thou increases, that these people might see less of me and more of thee. Consecrate me now to my, thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful and marvelous name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen. Amen. I call your attention to Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 25 through verse 34. Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse 25 through uh, verse 34. Uh, and it says, as it is translated in the New International Version, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering says uh, that verse 28 she said because she thought if I just touch his clothes I will be healed immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering I want to talk from this thought today beloved from this idea the power of a protest the power of a protest. Um, without question, this country has had its share of protesting as of recent. And although many people can see people protesting, it is important to understand not only the history of the protest, but the necessity of protesting. When Colin Kaepernick decided to take a knee during the playing of the national anthem in protest to police and gun violence, there were many people who thought there was some kind of legal violation. But he was well within his rights to do so. The definition of a protest is an organized public demonstration expressing strong objection to an official policy or course of action. In other words, a protest is an expressed objection to something that does not promote equal or fair treatment of others. Protesting in this country is as American as apple pie. The people will judge the protest of Kaepernick or, the, or they will condemn the raised fists of Tommy Smith and John Carlos in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City. People will call the Black Lives Matter movement a movement of hate, but will embrace the Boston Massacre, where British troops killed five people, including Crispix Addicts, a black man 
who were in the mob of people who were protesting the occupation by British troops. We remember with fond rem memories the Boston Tea Party, where individuals hurled tea from England into the Boston Harbor because they were tired of being taxed at an abnormal rate. The first Equal Rights Amendment movement took place in 1923 and continued into the 70s, which riddled with protests and rallies for women's rights. People still remember protests in Berkeley, California, and at Kent State, and other places all over the country against the Vietnam War. Protesting is, a, is American, and it is embraced by America when it suits her. And before you get too upset, understand that it is endorsed by America. Because your First Amendment states that people in this country have the freedom of religion, the freedom of press, the freedom of speech, and the freedom to gather and have peaceful assembly. In fact, in 1969, the Supreme Court, in the case of Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, they decided that the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, organizer and leader in the civil rights movement, could indeed assemble and protest as a form of expression during the civil rights movement. I'm sharing this history with you, brothers and sisters, because we need to be reminded that protesting is not only legal, but it's your right. It is what you sometimes have to do when no one will listen. Protesting is what you have to do when no one seems to be paying attention. Or, you're, or, or so protesting is what you have to do when you have worked with the system, but the system has not worked with you. Protesting is what happens when you are trying to get somebody's attention. Hold on. So by that logic, sometimes I have to speak up in order for things to change. In fact, I may have to operate in faith to get God to understand my situation. That perhaps my worship is a protest. Maybe my prayer is a protest. In fact, how about this? Could it be that even my faith sometimes is an act of protest? That my faith is protest when everything around me is trying to keep me from being the best I can be? That my faith to keep moving is a protest tool when everything else thinks that I am, that things aren't supposed to happen for me. When I know that there's a change in my life, but nobody wants to believe it or embrace it. That faith may be the thing I need to push forward in protest of whatever it is I'm facing. If no one else wants to believe me or nobody else wants to help me, I have to use whatever I have to allow the Lord to work with me. And I stand on my conviction, not because America says I can, but I stand on what I believe because God says there's still more hope for me. God says there's still greater works happening within me. God says I don't have to accept what people give me. I can stand on the promise that God knows what I'm going through and God can deliver me into better circumstances. Uh, there's power in my voice. There's power in the name of the Lord to make change in my life. And there is power, beloved, in your protest. So journey with me in this text and see that the protest means that you have to be willing to reach for some things. See, Jesus has made his way over to the other side of the lake of Gennesaret and is met by an influential man, a synagogue ruler by the name of Jairus. Jairus has a situation all on his own. He's pleading with Jesus to have him come help his dying daughter. The text declares that Jesus makes his way with Jairus through the crowd as the, they are pressing on him, meaning that Jesus is surrounded by people who are hanging on him, making requests. But in the crowd, there's this woman who, according to the scripture, has been subject to bleeding for 12 years. This, you understand, creates several challenges for her in her current cultural context. Because according to the biblical law, she is considered unclean and not supposed to be close to people at all. But here she is in the crowd with everybody else. Her condition is crucial. In fact, the text says uh, and tells us that it's getting worse. She has spent all the money she had on doctors who have were no real answers for her, but they did manage to take her money. Maybe she didn't have the right health insurance. Maybe she didn't have the right coverage. Perhaps her HMO didn't have the doctors she needed in her network. Perhaps she didn't make enough money in her household to be considered for eligible, eligible assistance and Obamacare. I mean, hemorrhaging for 12 years. If she ever was married, she's shown up divorced now because she's fending for herself. 
the society says she's in isn't interested in her well-being. It's only interested that she remains, watch this, out of sight. You can see women who are dealing with their monthly cycle often shared space together because they weren't supposed to be with their husbands, much less be with their husbands in their beds. So women, women would often stay together during their cycles and they were isolated from the rest of the community. And being as this woman has a constant issue, she is supposed to stay in the house and out of sight because she can be an inconvenience to those around her. The society she's in doesn't want to help her. They just want her to suffer quietly. They don't want to be inconvenienced by her issue or her problem. You know that's what happens to people who become difficult to help who, or who present an inconvenience for us. We prefer that they stay out of sight. People who make us uncomfortable, people who remind us that we can be in the same situation. We put them away quietly and ask them not to make too much noise or cause too much attention to themselves. We don't like to hear it. It's hard for others. Um, we don't like to hear that it's difficult for other people. We only want to hear when it's difficult for us. We don't want to be reminded that there are families that don't have enough food to eat. Just like right here in this section of Norfolk where we live in a food desert. Or that there's water in some parts of the world that is killing people because it's so contaminated like it is in Flint, Michigan. We don't want to be reminded that those who suffer with mental illness are less treated in this country. We don't want to know that there are people in perpetual poverty because some of these small municipalities like Ferguson, Missouri, write $500 jaywalking tickets when somebody makes minimum wage and got to take off work to go to court and they got little or nothing else to live on. We know they're out there. We know they're out there. We see them and we turn away. We know they're going through something, but it's too much for us to deal with. We don't want to be bothered with Black Lives Matter because that's not our community's problem. You got people like Ben Carson talking about it being a hate organization or this crazy woman running around smearing Black Lives Matter symbols with black paint because you don't want to deal with the issues. You would prefer that it goes away. The society isn't looking for help. It's more comfortable when the problems are hidden away. But this sister ain't hiding. In fact, she's right in the middle of it all. Watch this. In fact, she's in protest mode. And the Bible says she thinks to herself, if I can just touch his clothes, uh, I will be healed. She says, if I can just get to the garment, uh, if I can just get close enough to get what he has on, I know something's about to change. And so she reaches, and the text says, immediately, her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Some of y'all missed it. Folks wanted me to hide, but I didn't keep my struggle a secret. I took it to the one who could do something about it. I didn't let myself get limited by what other people were comfortable with, but I made my way and I reached out for something better. And if you want to get more from the Lord, you need to know how to reach. If you want God to change your situation, you need to know how to reach. Every now and then, you need to know how to take a risk. I'm not even supposed to be here, but I'm taking a risk, and the Lord still helped me. I wasn't about protocol. It wasn't about peace of mind, and the Lord still showed up and delivered. There's some people who could say, I was in some places that I wasn't supposed to be. I was in some circles where people looked their nose down on me. I was in some places where they would have preferred to kindly ask me to leave or to step to the back, but because I knew who the Lord was in my life. I had a protest spirit of faith, and I decided that I was going to stand up, and the Lord has delivered every time. You got to know that protest means that you have to reach for some things. But here's the second thing is, protest means that you're going to have to be real with where you are. Yeah, see this woman, she reached even when she wasn't even supposed to be there. She got to the place where she wasn't going to be defined by society's the rules and regulations. She wasn't going to be boxed in by what the structure said. Think about it. She's pressing through the crowd. Technically, according to Levitical law, contaminating all those people that she's pushing by to get to Jesus. Technically, all those people she is touching as she's pushing to get to Jesus are now considered unclean. And you know, we never think about it, but we never know what it takes for somebody to make it through their situation despite their obstacles. 
We don't know how hard it is for some people to make their way into work. We don't know how hard it is for some people to show up at school uh, when they're navigating through the streets of violence and drugs and domestic abuse. We don't even know what it is for some people, how hard it is for them to even show up to worship on a Sunday morning. Some people have been so beat up all week long. Some people get doctor's news and diagnosis that they just can't believe. Some people got folk in their houses who fuss at them and cuss at them and hit them and abuse them. That every time they wake up in the morning from the the time they go to bed at night that they don't feel like doing much of anything some people get beat up by life and start to believe what the devil is telling them and they want to quit and give up and don't even try and see what the next day will be like but there's something about the name Jesus there's something about the name Jesus that makes people want to press their way. There's something about the name Jesus and the promise that the Lord is able to work it out. Makes them say, if I can just make it into the presence of the Lord one more time, some people tell themselves, I don't have nothing left to give, but I'm trusting God to do something in my situation in this moment. If I could have a few of y'all chocolate people who say, y'all don't know how hard it is for me to make it happen each and every day but I keep on pressing because Jesus promised me that it's about to get better yeah, oh, oh there's something that you can say that I don't know there's some people you say I don't know what it took for you to get here but I know when you're here because you're looking for God to do something in your situation and look with this position look this is the position that Jesus is in right now in this text, right now in this text, where Jesus is, Jesus is saying, hold up. He says, hold on. Somebody just touched me. He said, wait a minute. Jesus is walking, pressing through the crowd. Mind you, he's going with Jairus somewhere. His direction is Jairus. He stops because somebody's been changed. He's on his way to a healing, but he stops where he is because he says, hold on a second, I'm noticing that somebody's different. Huh, missed it. Jesus realized that power has gone out of him, and he says, who touched me? I don't want you to miss this, family. You see, the traditional text says that virtue left him. And so that means that Jesus knew that he had to share something at that moment. Uh, he wanted to know where it went. Huh, y'all, Some of y'all still ain't getting this. We say... He's a God that looks past our fault and sees our need. So the power in him recognized the need in her. So when the need in her met up with the power in him, there was a transfer. Because the need was so great, Jesus had to find out who it was. He asked, who touched me? The disciples said, huh? You see the people crowding around you, Jay? They call him Jay. You see the people crowding around you? What you mean who touched you? Everybody is touching you. You going to ask us who touched you in this crowd? You missed it. She might not have looked like she needed anything. But her touch told a whole different story. Oh, help me somebody. She might not have looked like she needed anything. Oh, but when she touched Jesus, it told a whole different story. Here it is. It doesn't matter what you look like or what you need. When you need something from the Lord, I mean really need something from the Lord. I mean your enough is enough need him. You can touch him like nobody else can. She may have looked like she had it together. She may have looked like she could blend in. But what she needed, or well, only the Lord could provide. And you see, some of us are too busy. Working hard, we work hard, we work hard to look like we got it together. Some of us work hard to look like we got it together instead of going to God with what we really need. And if you truly want to be liberated from the things that have you bound up, then you need to reach out and get real. You need to touch the Lord and get what you need from him. Jesus ain't moving. Jesus got that kind of determination and resilience in him. He said, Jesus ain't going to budge. He ain't going no further until he knows who it is. And I thought about that thing. Why wouldn't Jesus leave? Why wouldn't Jesus just be happy that somebody's blessed and move on? Well, I would like to think that Jesus wanted to know who needed that much from him. Because there's a lesson on the other side of the blessing. See, it's not just the blessing you get. It's the lesson you get from the blessing. 
So I think that Jesus stayed because he wanted to let that person know that there was a teaching that went with the blessing. But then I started to think about that thing. Not so much as why Jesus didn't leave, but why didn't the woman leave? I mean, she could have gotten in a lot of trouble. She could have really made some folks angry, pressing up against them and getting in their their way to keep them in. I mean, to avoid trouble, she could have just reached in, slipped in, and slipped right back on out. But I thought about it. She must have wanted to say thank you for what the Lord had done. So she tells him the whole story. She has to tell him the whole truth. She got to keep it real, carrying around the burden for so long. And you have the Lord remove it with one touch. She must have wanted to tell the Lord what happened. I've been carrying this thing for 12 years, and God moved this thing right away. I have to have a thank you and a praise report in my situation. And when you have the Lord to show up in your situation, you ought to have sense enough to tell the Lord thank you. If you've been dealing with it for 12 years or you've been dealing with it for 12 minutes, when you know that the Lord has showed up in your situation, you ought to be able to say, God, I thank you for what it is you've done for me. If you know where I've been and what I've been through, I need to tell you my story because won't nobody believe it. But because the Lord stepped in my situation, I've got to tell the Lord how grateful I am for everything that the Lord has done. We need to keep this thing. We need to keep this thing uh, focused and, and make sure that you keep it real uh, in this thing. Got to know how to read it. Got to know how to keep it real. But here it is. Here's the final thing. Your protest means that the Lord is able to restore us through our faith. See, Jesus ain't moving. He keep looking around. He wants to know who touched him. He wants to know if got the power, who got the power they needed. Woman realizing what happened to her goes to him and she falls at his feet. I'm in the text. The text says, with fear and trembling, she told him the whole truth. I don't know what the actual conversation was, but I've got to believe she went down on her knees and said, teacher, it was me. I want you to know I, did, I didn't mean to disturb you. My plan wasn't to make you stop your plans or slow you down. I wasn't trying to get in your way. I wasn't trying to slow you down from your destination. I promise I wasn't. I know you got somewhere to be, but you see, I've been dealing with this issue. Uh, for with bleeding for a little while now. It's messed my life up. It's kept me from doing anything. I heard you were in the area. And so I figured that if anybody could do anything about it, you could. Uh, so I pressed my way in this crowd and I figured if I could just get close enough to you, I didn't want to bother you. I just wanted to get close enough to you that if I could get a little bit what you had, I would be all right. So I stretched out to touch you, and I got pushed from behind. And, and as I started to fall, uh, my fingers brushed up against your garment right there. And I'm sorry to have disturbed you. But I need you to know I'm all better now. I need you to know my situation is fine. I need you to know because I got close to you, my situation is all worked out. Jesus, here's the story. And the woman tells her, he says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Uh, some of y'all missed your shout. Jesus says, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. That Jesus declares that the woman's faith has made her well. Can I help some of y'all? Jesus doesn't make a judgment about how she got there. Jesus doesn't bring up her breaking protocol or be it in violation of the law. Jesus doesn't say to her, well, I wanted to find you because you didn't do this right or you didn't do this that way. But her faith is enough to bring her to the place of healing in the same place that could set her free. Her faith is the tool that allowed her to break free from the thing that was holding her back and holding her down. That if you reach out to the Lord and break free from what you are facing and break out of what's got you holding captive, to break out of what is limiting your potential, if you can say, I've been in this place long enough, I've been in this hell too long, I have suffered with this too long, then I can get real with where I am and what I need, and I can reach for the Lord to help me work this thing out. That sometimes you need to reach out when nobody will reach out for you. Sometimes you need to give God the glory when nobody else can do it for you. That you need to stretch out when nobody can do it for you because the Lord has what you need. You just need the touch of the Lord's power. 
You just need to know that there's somebody uh, who's able to intercede on your behalf. You know, some of y'all have heard me mention before uh, and said that, you know, I mentioned jail. You've heard me mention jail. I'm not in jail. I do work out of jail. I'm not in jail. I do work out of jail, and I do, I'm a social work, I do social work over at Western Tower, the regional jail. I work, do some mental health for the inmates who need some emotional mental health support. I do some of that. The other day, I was looking at my list of people to work with, and the day when I came across four names, and I was going into the office, and they brought me a dude with a Spanish name. I didn't think anything of it. And so I said, hey, how you doing? My name is Mr. Small. I work with mental health. How can I help you? And he looked at me with a straight face and said, yo no sé. Without thinking, I said again, my name is Mr. Small. I work with mental health. I, I hear you put a request in. How can I help you? He said, yo no sé. I don't know. That's Spanish for I don't know. Right? It took me a second, and as my high school Spanish kicked in, I said, ooh, okay. He don't understand what I'm saying. That's what that means. Then I said, okay, um, this brother, I said, I, I said, he ain't, I'm not speaking Spanish, and he not speaking English. All right? Now, I ain't learned this part of social work in Norfolk State. So I looked at him, he looked at me. I said, um, started going to research. I said, como es su salud mental? How's your mental health? Something like that. He said, he said, no bueno. He said, no bueno. I said, okay, I know that mean no good. That mean that's not good. I said, okay, we getting somewhere. But, but after I said that, I was done. That's why I took Spanish one, two times, and Spanish two, two times. I got four years of Spanish. I got four years of Spanish in high school. I took Spanish one twice and Spanish two twice. So I got four years of it. But that was it. That's where I stopped. That was all I had. I had no more uh, mental health Spanish form. And so I, I, if I really started talking, I knew I messed it up. So I looked at him. He looked at me. I said, uh, I knew one more thing. I said, hmm. Un momento, un momento. He said, okay, see, see, we sat there, right? So I called the supervisor. I called the supervisor. I said, listen, uh, I got a dude here who speaks Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, and he don't speak English. Uh, and the mental health, uh, I know all I know is that his mental health ain't good. That's what my four years of uh, Spanish has taught me, right? The supervisor said, look on the wall. So I looked on the wall in the office. He said, there's a number where there's a translator that you can call. I said, okay. So I called the number, the translator got on. Uh, I said, he said, where's the individual? I said, he right here. I put the phone on speaker. I said, go ahead, sir. He right there. The man told him, I said, okay, all right. And the man face lit up. He got excited, right? And he said, he started to translate what he was saying in Spanish to me in English. And we worked out his issue. And after uh, I asked and I talked to the man, we worked everything out. Hey, so I said to the Spanish speaking brother, I said, so everything is good? The man translated. He said, everything is good. And so I asked him, I said, listen, sir, before you hang up, can I ask you what you said to him? Habla por ti. I said, what does that mean? He said, I told him I would speak up for him. He said, I told him that I would speak up for him when he couldn't. That what he would say, I would interpret it and speak up on his behalf and because he had somebody to speak up on his behalf he got everything that he needed some of y'all missing my preaching that aren't you glad that somebody is able to speak up on your behalf that you got somebody in your life who knows what you need who understands it when you call who understands your tears in the middle of the night who understands when you're praying who understands when you're going through and when can't nobody else understand Understand what you saying? Aren't you got a translator that says this is my child that I'm looking out for them, and now we'll make sure that they are covered and a hedge of protection is placed around them? Aren't you grateful that you got a translator who knows every hurt that you have? Aren't you glad that you got a translator that knows every tear that you cry? Aren't you grateful that you got a translator that knows how to understand your faults? and work through your needs and because you've got a translator who understands your situation you're here right now declaring how good and how wonderful the Lord is I declare there's power in your protest if you know how to speak up there's power in your protest if you know how to trust him there's power in your protest if you believe
believe the Lord ain't finished with you. And I believe there are a few people in the building who know that God is still working on me. And as long as the Lord is working on me, I'm going to keep on reaching. I'm going to keep being real. And I'm going to keep on being restored because the Lord is able to work out my situation. There's power in your protest. You got to know. You got to know how to protest. You got to know when to speak up. Got to know that even when nobody else understands, there's somebody who speaks your language. Oh, aren't you glad that there's somebody who speaks your language? Somebody who understands. that I hear, I hear there's a song that says that he hears our faintest cry. Oh, and he answers by and by. Oh, that he's able to restore. He's able to hear whatever it is we're going through. So right now, in this moment, right now in this moment, my brothers, my sisters, we extend this moment to you. And those of you who are watching with us, viewing with us virtually, maybe somebody right now out there in the virtual world who is looking to start a new protest, looking to operate in the context of faith, that your faith will be your protest declaration. That everybody around you is saying, what's the use of all that religious stuff? What's the use of all that church stuff, all that God talk? But you know in your heart, uh, that it is a voice of protest. So right now, if there's you, if that's you, there's somebody uh, who is watching who says, I, I want to be a part of the family of faith. I want to be a part of the New Calvary Baptist Church family. That's you right now. You can call our church, call the number that's made available. You can call us and let us know that you just want to be a part of the fellowship. But not only that, we want to give you opportunity right now to give your life over to the Lord. You say, God, I love you. God, I'm trying my best. God, I've tried my best, and I understand that I can't make it without you. God, I understand in the ups and downs of life, there's circumstances that I didn't seek, didn't understand, didn't see coming, and I didn't ask for. But God, I believe that you're still healing. God, I believe that you're still delivering. God, I believe that you're still setting people free. So God, I'm asking you to come into my heart. Let your spirit fall fresh on me. That I want to be renewed. I want to be revived. I want to be refreshed. I want to walk differently. I want to see the world differently. I want to operate with a different perspective. I no longer want to be a victim. I want to be a victor. I no longer want to operate in the sense of being told what I must do uh, by the world and what they think. But God, I want to follow you. So order my steps right now, God. And I will continue in all things to serve you and all things to give you praise, honor, and glory. And we celebrate with you right now. We put our hands together right here and bless God for you, for that decision, for that choice that you're making right now. For we believe God is transformative. And so make sure that if you want to be a part of the New Calvary family, you just reach out to us. We'd love to share with you and love to grow with you in this moment. And so as we prepare our hearts and minds to depart from this place, uh, we are grateful. Make sure that you uh, tune in and continue to watch as we continue to share even in this moment. Uh, for our Summer Madness series. We're grateful for you. Make sure that you're tuning in, you're subscribing, that you are liking, and that you are following our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube page. We love to worship with you, and we're grateful that you're sharing with us in this moment. So as we prepare to depart from this place, we say, God, we love you. God, we thank you for worship. Thank you for this opportunity to come into this place. God, thank you for this worship experience. And we pray that your spirit has not only resonated in this building, but it has resonated in all of the televisions and all of the computers, all of the, tele all of the social devices and media devices um, that have been watching this moment. And God, we give you praise for it all. And we thank you and ask you to keep us safe, keep us protected, keep us shielded until we fellowship with each other again. And in all things, we give you praise. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen. Say amen and amen again. We'll see you next time. Until then, we love you. Take care of yourself and each other. Be good. Peace.